God mm -hmm. sent his son, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And mm -hmm. he's the reason that we have the ability to go to heaven. We will not get to heaven without going through him. Mm -hmm. My story, you came to me because you thought I was a student. A student, yeah. I have a student here. Yeah. Because even though my dad passed the church, I mm -hmm. came home at 16 and told my parents I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I am living proof that if God touches your life, you can turn it around. Yeah, yeah. That's that's a testimony right there. Sure. So, what, what's your name? My name is Leanne. Leanne Slavic. Nice to meet you. You too. Yeah. Where are you from? Popper Bluff. Popper oh, Popper Bluff. That's right. Yeah. I'm from Ukraine originally. Yeah. So, um, what uh brings you out here? Like, you say you're a parent. My daughter's orientation. Mm, that's great. Yeah. So yeah, I'm asking people like what they believe about God, afterlife, because you know it's very important in the world to know what's going to happen, you know, after we die and what what our purpose in life is. So what do you believe about God and God mm -hmm. sent his son, mm -hmm. Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our sins. And yeah. he's the reason that we have the to go to heaven. We will not get to heaven without going through him. Amen. That's, I mean, Jesus that's, Christ is the only way to heaven. That's right. Amen. That's right. Good good answer. Because, I mean, I asked a lot of people. And there, there, there is an afterlife. And I don't care if you want to look at it or not. Hell mm -hmm. is real just like heaven is real. Yeah. And you're going to go one, one place or another. Mm-hmm. I agree you with you. You have to do more than go to church every day. Yeah. You have to mm -hmm. live a life with the Lord. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Praise God. You have to be born again. Absolutely. Yeah. So tell me about your story. Like, how, how are you just so solid in your faith? Like, what happened? Um, I grew up that way. Mm -hmm. My grandma taught, my grandma took me to church. You know, everybody has one of those. Yeah, that's true. My dad mm -hmm. is a pastor. Mm -hmm. um, I myself have done some children's ministry. Mm -hmm. I kind of have a, a Peter take to it we're very i'm very lame in terms like yeah. it's children's ministry yeah, but sure. that's that's what it is that's awesome so um do you feel like your relationship with god has gotten stronger over the years absolutely mm. particularly in the last three years was it because of covid or no 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 mm. not at all because I, a lot of people found the lord like through covid or got stronger with whatever them. it takes to find him yeah and even more so whatever it takes to keep them mm. because i get asked a lot well, yeah. what was your experience? Tell me about your experience. It's not one sole experience. Right. Once you initially experience the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. you live that. Yeah. So for me, like God saved me in America. So I came from Ukraine, you know, the country that's a war right now. And like, I didn't know anything about the gospel. Um, God brought me into a man and his son that actually told me about Jesus for the first time in my life. Well, I heard about him from my grandma, like stories, but I never knew actually like what the, what, why Jesus came to die on the cross, you know? And, and so, and I know I used to be very worldly. And then when I received Christ in my life, my whole life transformed and, you know, and, and I really see how in America, everyone is so like Christianized, but no one really has that relationship with Christ. And so that's what happened to me. And that's, I see that's what happened to you too. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. My story, you came to me because you thought I was a student. A student, yeah. I have a student here. Yeah. Because even though my dad pastors the church, I mm -hmm. came home at 16 and told my parents I was pregnant. Mm -hmm. So I am living proof that if God touches your life, you can turn it around. Amen. Yeah. That's that's a testimony right there. Do you, um, how, uh, how, how do you share the gospel in your testimony with others? Do you do it regularly whenever God gives you the opportunity? Yes, absolutely. Mm -hmm. And just like right now, yeah. um, last night I needed prayer. Mm -hmm. Um, and so I put on Facebook and it's, um, Matthew chapter 18 verses 18, 18 through 20. When mm -hmm. two or more gather in my name there, I'll be also. Well, yeah, I'll be with, I'll be with them. Amen. So you feel like you feel like God kind of really does answer your prayers Absolutely. when you put them out. Absolutely. All yeah. you have to have is that mustard mm -hmm. mustard seed of faith. Yeah. Amen. Amen. And that's the biggest thing that I tell people is like if they really want to see God and they don't know if He exists, really have that mustard seed of faith. You know, even if they don't, they have so many questions about the Bible, Christianity. Yeah. At least have that openness. You know, that God can speak to you, and He does reveal Himself. And have yeah. that faith that if you take it to the Lord. Leave it right there. Yeah. Don't walk away with the same worry. Amen. Don't walk away with that same stress. Amen. Leave it there. And if you yeah. feel it, our God is not a God of confusion. That is Satan. Mm -hmm. You pray Satan away. 
Amen. Yeah. Spiritual warfare. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, a lot of Christians that I talk to, they don't get discipled in uh, understanding that, you know, the demonic realm is more real than even our physical. Absolutely. So, yeah. And so, you know, um, we really train people, you know, I'm from Arizona. So that's why I live permanently, but I'm here training churches how to evangelize. So that's why I'm here in Missouri. And so, and this is kind of my home away from home. So it's cool meeting another, you know, strong believer here. Because, you know, if people don't know that the devil's always out to destroy you, kill, steal, kill, and destroy, the Christian thinks that he's, oh, because I'm saved, like the devil's not going to touch me. But he can still try to access. Yeah. God promises us heaven right? if we follow him and we learn from him and Amen. we live for him. He doesn't follow, he doesn't promise us an easy road to get there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Look at Job. Yeah. A man of suffering. Absolutely. Yeah. And when I became a Christian, a little part of my story is my mom, she went totally anti-Christian. Like she went towards the New Age route, kind of Oprah's the magic, you know, a lot of like godhood, self-godhood. So she she like emotionally like persecuted me for my faith and told that my faith was stupid, you know, and now you're brainwashed. And But, you know, that made me only stronger. It's realized that God was so real in my life because I couldn't deny what his transformation did to me, you know, even though I couldn't answer everything. At 13, 14 right, years old. Right. It's something that you just feel. Yeah. And when someone says, tell me about your experience, it's really hard to put into words unless yeah. if you if you experience it, then you know. Exactly, yeah. And and God and taught me, you know, the doctrine is really important too because it's, it's experience with doctrine because you can experience the burning in your bosom like the Mormons do, yeah. but they're only about the experience. Their, their doctrine is so opposite from the Bible, you know, because yeah. and so that's why it's so important for people to have the right doctrine because that, that allows you to really experience God for his character, for who he is, you know. Yeah. So it's, you know, both the, the doctrine and the experience, but the most important thing is to be born again. That is yeah. the most important. Mm -hmm. It's funny you said doctrine because yeah. whenever you approached me, I was like, yeah, let's talk about it. Right. I talk about God all day. That's great. But that's why I said what I did. If I, you say something and I disagree with it, I'll tell you. Right. Because as a Christian, we, the, even the church is like, it doesn't matter if you're a Baptist or First Baptist, Second Baptist, mm -hmm. Methodist. Pentecost. We, we have Pentecost. Yeah. Oh, it, yeah. that, that's a worldly, like mm -hmm. we are Christians, we are brothers and sisters, we are not enemies. Right. It is a worldly, small little doctrine that hangs on their church wall. Mm -hmm. That's all. Right. Yeah. As, as long as we really believe, you know, the, what the Bible says, you know, Paul said that the gifts are for everybody. You know, everyone has a gifting. So you have a gift. I have the gift of evangelism because I got put in me, you know, and, uh, you know, I have the gift of encouragement, you know. And so I've met so many of my friends in ministry. They have the gifts of prophecy. You know, they can really speak a prophetic word over somebody's life. My life. I had prophetic words spoken over my life that led me to the path that I'm here today. I didn't listen to it at first because I doubted God, but then God proved that his prophetic words were real. So, so it's just, you have to test the spirits. You know, that's what, the, that's what Paul says, test the yes. spirits. Yes, because mm -hmm. it, there will many, many come against you yeah. trying to get you to believe it. It's, it's God and it's not God. Right. So. Satan will hide in the dark, and that's how, that's how he's going to fight every battle he's got. Amen. Amen. Yeah, uh, this is a this is a joy to meet you. Um, God has been yeah, God has been really get blessing me with strong believers in, at Missouri State Campus. I don't I I'm a campus missionary at University of Arizona, one of the biggest universities in America. But it's really really hard. The ground is very hard there. God still moves. We have testimonies that are amazing. But it just feels like there's more like God's spirits moving a lot here on campus too. What I found, especially working with kids, and but my kids, I mean, they were they were little. However, if they could just get past the, I don't want to be the first one to make a step. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want to be the first one. I want to be just like my peers. Yeah. That's really our biggest challenge in trying to reach our youth. Mm -hmm. Right. Getting them to step out from, and it's really to no fault of them because they probably don't know what Satan has instilled in them from the darkness to think is okay. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, the first step is to open up their eyes, and that's what you know Jesus does. He takes away the veil, like he did with Paul. So, yes. yeah. Well, I really appreciate. Amen. Yeah, Amen. The sermon, Amen. Amen. So, well, I encourage you to continue following the Lord hard because um, the days are getting you know really bad. I, you know what? Yeah. I, it's been a blessing to even meet you today. I did a lot of praying last night about a few things. It's been a blessing to meet you today. 
Likewise. Yeah, that's this is awesome. I'm I feel really pumped. <laughs> okay, you sure? Okay. Well, God bless you. Thank you so much. You yeah, and I'll, I'll pray for you too. Thank you. Uh -huh.